Hello everybody, it's Friday. Time for Facebook Friday. Hopefully you guys can find me and watch me live. If not, uh, you can watch in the replay. I watch most of my, not mine, but the lives that I wanna watch, I usually watch them in the replay. So let's see if we're gonna get everybody jumping on. All right, I see a few of you. I wanna make sure that you guys can see me and hear me because we're trying the Wi-Fi again. I know, every week, it's a mess. But this week, I think we might have improved the Wi-Fi situation. We'll see, right? Hopefully I don't lose signal. Um, <laughs> Oh goodness, hello everybody. All right, I see all of you jumping on, great. Let me pull up my iPad. So this week, uh, it's all about the Best Catch Bundle, which has been so fun. I have really been wanting to play with it um, since I first saw it, and it just seems like we've had holidays and all kinds of stuff, and I haven't gotten to it. So this week, I have really enjoyed playing with it. Hello everybody, Debbie, thank you for sharing the video. I appreciate it. Darcy, hopefully your internet stays on today too. Boy, it's hit or miss, right? It's 2019, we shouldn't be having these problems with the internet. I'm just, oh, you guys know how it is when you have to call the company. It's not fun. I hate doing it. And I've been putting it off and trying to fix it myself. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Oh, good. No, turn that vacuum off. None of that on a Friday afternoon. No way. Okay, so, um, I have a few things to tell you and I'm going to show you, let's see, over my shoulder, can you see back there, I have a little bit of the storage by Stampin' Up. I didn't order very much of it, usually um, I order whatever's new, I order it the first day and I did this time but I didn't order a lot of it because I knew I wasn't really going to have time to organize and get it all in place but I ordered enough to show you guys what it looks like. Um, I if you don't know, next week I will be totally off the air. There will be no Facebook Lives. Um, I have a few things scheduled for the blog, but I'm gonna be pretty quiet next week preparing for On Stage, which is our Stampin' Up! Demonstrator event on Saturday, um, which is here in town. Um, but the what's taking me away from you guys is Friday, uh, my friend Kay Cogbill and I are hosting a huge event um, here for about 140 people. So this week and next week is, you know, crunch time and trying to get all that done. So I knew that's why I didn't order very much of that. I'm going to treat myself after on stage to some more storage by Stampin' Up! because I really do like it and I think you guys are going to like it too. Before I take the camera and walk away and hopefully not lose the signal, I'm going to tell you guys a few things. The um, I almost call it the Easter class. I don't know why. It This class, the Tea Together Stamp um, Class to Go, it features the Tea Together Stamp Set, is available for registration. The option with the framelits sold out the very first day. I thought I had plenty of them, but you guys were like crazy and wanted that option with the framelits. Here's the deal, if you didn't get the framelit option, because the framelits were available during celebration, I collected as many as I could and I was offering them as part of the kit. If you didn't get in on that part, but you still want the class to go, the framelits they have told us are uh, carrying over and will be available in that annual catalog in June. So if you want to get the class now, um, it will come with a stamp set and then you can order the framelits in June uh, when the catalog goes live. So don't worry, the framelits are not gone forever if you didn't get them during celebration and you didn't get them as part of my class to go, you can still get them in June. The class to go is still available with the stamp set, without the stamp set, and as a PDF option. So I will add the link here on the description when I'm done, but you can also go over to pinkbuckaroo.com and find um, all the information. You have to actually email me um, for that registration link. I'm not allowed to list that link on social media or my blog. It's just one of Stampin' Up's rules. You have to email me and then I can send it to you through email. Okay, so it's still there. It's got the little purse and the cards. I kind of have it pulled apart right now because if you can see over here, this is part of our demonstrator event and I have been cutting furiously for the last three days trying to prepare for that. 
Um, the second thing I wanted to tell you is that today, this morning, our All-Star Tutorial Bundle Blog Hop went live. Um, this is the, the tutorial bundle PDF that myself and 11 other amazing demonstrators put together every month. We each do a different um, tutorial. And it's available, when it comes, it'll be in inches and metrics. So wherever you live, whatever you use, you'll be able to use it. And you can just see there are tons of amazing things, kind of spring focused. Well, I don't know, sort of spring focused. Mine really isn't, but <laughs> things from the occasions catalog. And I'll show you mine real quick. Okay, Shh, I'm not supposed to show you, but it's a candy dispenser. All right, so that's my tutorial that's in here. The only way you can get this is by spending $50 online, ordering and uh, putting in a Stampin' Up! order. Um, and the second way is you can buy it. It's $15 in my PDF store. If you are already a demonstrator and you don't wanna order products for me, I totally get that. You can buy it for $15. Um, also, my team gets it for free, of course. So if you wanna buy that starter kit and get all your storage by Stampin' Up! stuff in your starter kit, then you're gonna also get all of my um, PDFs for free once you join my team. So it's kind of a perk. It's kind of a good perk. All right, so be looking for that. Um, I will add the details. I'll add the link uh, to that. Well, it's the it was just this morning's post, but I'll add that link up in the descriptions also, okay? Um, let's do prizes, and then I'll turn the camera over, and we can go look at, um, oh, well, what did I do with today's prizes? Hmm. That's weird. Where did they go? Oh, <laughs> I know what I did. Okay. I put the names from last week on today's prizes. Oops, last week, let's see, last week, they should be right here. Let's see if I can find them. I have a cabinet right here, and it's somewhat organized. Yep, here they are. I didn't pull them out. All right, so last week the prizes were the Itty Bitty Birthdays, which is a really good set. Hopefully we will still have it when the new catalog comes out in June. So Itty Bitty Birthdays and some Happiness Blooms enamel dots. Gail Boyd, congratulations, you are the first winner. And Crystal DeLuna, who is on my team, she is in my second level, you are the second winner. You can win a prize by sharing the video or going over to my blog and entering the little widget that down on the bottom. All right, so I can't remember, maybe Crystal is from the widget random draw and Gail is from sharing, I can't remember, but one or the other, that's how you win prizes. And then on Tuesday's video, I had a prize for sharing. Also, I know it's backwards, Sherry Turner, you win the paper share, okay? Sherry, I do not have your address. So please uh, email it to me. And Gail, I don't think I have yours either. So please email those to me. Crystal, I have your address. I will be mailing it to you, okay? Congratulations, ladies. Thank you for sharing the video. It is always helpful um, for me to find new customers. So I appreciate that. Um, and this week, the prize is family and friends. I have been dying to use this set, you guys, and I have not used it. So hopefully in the next few weeks for Facebook Friday, we'll be able to use this. It's so cute. It just kind of reminds me of things we did when we were little. Just kind of, I don't know, paper dolls or something. It's very cute. So I've got two of them. You can enter to win by sharing this video on Facebook or going over to my blog and entering that little raffle copter is what it's called. All right, I think we're ready. I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna walk you over um, to my cabinet. And I just unplugged that microphone, so hopefully it's good. And now everybody cross your fingers. Let's not lose the signal when I come over here. All right, so storage by Stampin' Up, that's what this is. You can see it, see what it looks like. I just ordered one of each, okay? Um, here are the stamp pad holders it also holds the markers and then this is the part that holds your stamp and blends up here this is one of the lids you have a choice when you order the lid you can either get the flat lid or the lid that holds stuff um, it's designed specifically i think to hold your reinker bottles but you could put anything you want up there really 
Now the open cube is for anything that you want. And notice that I have my old style ink pads in there. Um, lots of questions about the old ink pads, if they will fit in here. This was designed to fit new ink pads, okay? Designed only for new ink pads. And they fit really well. But I do wanna show you, and forgive me, because I'm trying to do this with one hand. See how nice they fit? Some people have said that you can fit your old ink pads in there. And I will tell you that when I wasn't holding the camera, I could slide it in there, but it was pretty tight. Oh, I wasn't even showing you. Sorry, see, I'm not looking at the camera. See, it will go in there, but it is a tight fit, okay? I'll have to put the camera down to get it all the way in there. I can't do it. So what I would recommend, because that's not how it's designed, I would recommend getting the open box here for your old ink pads until you transition them over okay so that's what it looks like it is pretty sturdy uh, it's plastic but it's good plastic if that makes sense and if you set it up against your wall and have and you continue to stack and and add as you can afford it I think you're going to be very happy with it um, the thing I really like the best is the fact that you can just buy you know one set maybe this month you can only order one or two and next month maybe it's your birthday and you can order four um, you don't have to invest hundreds of dollars right at one time if you can't afford to do that right and get in trouble <laughs> with somebody at home for buying a whole bunch of organization stuff you can order you could add one piece on each time you put in an order um, let's come over here and look at the um there's a little configuration sheet is what i think they're calling it it's like a little worksheet to help you plan what you want to order sorry guys hold for a second while i adjust all of this i need a camera pathetic attempt at filming my uh storage stuff sad i need an assistant the only assistant here are the dogs and i don't think they would be that helpful so let's look, here's this chart and I will add the link to the configuration chart in the video, okay? Um, it, it'll walk you through, you know, figuring out exactly what you need. How many stamp pads do you have? How many markers do you have? Um, how many blends? It helps you figure out exactly what you need and then you can kind of plan out what you need, maybe, um, you know, order a few this month, a few next month, a few the month after. That way you kind of break it up and it's not terribly, you know, expensive. And it's not expensive when you look at it, the, the one cube, which would hold five ink pads and five markers is $14. One cube that holds uh, blends, each tray store stick six stamp and blends and there are five trays how many is that 30 blends for 14 so that's really i feel like really reasonable and i think it was very smart for stamping up to plan it out that way to help us kind of with our budget because we don't want to just order this right we want to order a stamp set we want to order uh some paper and some ink um but then maybe add one of these on each month i don't know that's how i would do it if I were trying to budget it out, okay? All right, hi, Betty, did you have a hard time finding me? Betty, your little comment, wherever I saw it yesterday was so sweet. Thank you so much, that really touched me. I had a rough day yesterday. Just a lot of stuff going on and your comment really just was exactly what I needed to hear, so thank you, Betty. Um, if you've never joined me for Facebook Friday, I type up a PDF like this. It has all the products, I'm gonna to use today, hopefully. I probably forget one or two here and there. It has item numbers and prices so you can see exactly what things cost. It also has all the measurements down here that you'll need to recreate these projects. On the second sheet, there's a direct link to my Tea Together class to go, the one I was just showing you, and the Beach Happy. Guys, I have this class ready i just have not had a chance to list it so it's coming i promise i'm sorry to be late on that um hopefully this weekend we have three volleyball games yesterday we had a tennis tournament all this morning um it's just and this other thing i'm trying to get get ready for but i really want to have this ready for you guys so be looking for it it's a cute summer class um that should be ready to put online i don't know why it's taking me so long 
And the other thing that I do, here's our host code. Let's see if I can get it straight. Um, I always attach a host code to my Facebook Friday, kind of like it's my card class. And you can get the projects for free with a minimum $30 order. If you want to do that, you can put your order in by Monday at midnight. Um, here's the host code. The host code is also on my blog and on that PDF. And then next week, I will cut and pack everything and I will send it. Look at this guy. He wants to keep poking out. Um, and I will send it to you in the mail before I leave her on stage, okay? Hi, Amy, thank you for sharing, I appreciate it. All right, so that's it. That's how we roll here at Facebook Friday. I'm gonna turn the fan down because it makes the camera kind of roll. So our bundle, our product of the week is Best Catch. How many of you have this um, and have played with it? It's really different. It's very uh, different than what I normally create with. So it was really a challenge for me to kind of create some things that are masculine. Masculine for one is hard for me. <laughs> I just wanna put a bow on everything. Um, and I have three little girls, so my brain just, you know, naturally thinks girls. But I loved this because, I, as I told you guys on Tuesday, my dad was a fisherman, uh, my brother is a fisherman, my husband is a fisherman, my two youngest girls are fisher ladies, I guess, fisher women. So I really knew that I would get a lot of use out of this. So I played with it, and on Tuesday we made this fun little box. Uh, it's actually a they're, they called it a fish, a, what did they call it? A fishing basket. It was a, in our demonstrator magazine. So if you wanna see how to make that, go back over to Tuesday. It's more of an advanced project, I will tell you, but it's totally worth it. Very, very cute. All right, so today, these are the three we're gonna make. We're gonna make a gift card holder, a card, and a little treat box, of course. I always have to have a treat box. And we're gonna start with this one. And this kind of has a technique in it, a watercolor technique. And you guys, I asked you on Facebook yesterday what techniques you want to see. What do you want to learn about? And some of you were saying, um, well, is this, does this qualify as a technique? You know, if you think it does, then yes. That's kind of always my struggle with techniques too, because I, th I think, is this considered a technique? I think if it's something new that you don't know how to do, then yeah, it's a technique. I am hoping I'd like and I'm crossing my fingers that I can get pull this off I'd like to have a technique club this summer kind of like my blends club and I am just really right now in the brainstorming process so if you have suggestions for a technique club please go over there um, on Facebook and add your suggestion onto that so it'll help me plan those out okay all right so our first card is featuring this rainbow trout, which is what my husband said it was. I told you guys on Tuesday, I have no idea what these things are called. I do fish, I like to fish. I don't, I'm not crazy about it, crazy enough to know all the names, but I asked him and he told me it was a rainbow trout, so I looked it up and we're gonna color it like that, like the pictures I found on Google. I used some banners here, kind of with the idea of a fishing tournament. That was kind of my idea, okay? All right, the first thing we're gonna do is the background. And we're gonna do two different things here. We're gonna watercolor it and add some brusho. So what I'm doing is squeezing my ink pad to get that color right there in the lid. If you don't wanna do that to your ink pad, just take a clear block, which is what I try to normally do on Facebook Friday, but I forgot today. Um, you can stamp it on there and then it's like a little palette of ink, okay? Oh, Laurie, that's an interesting fact. A, a fish basket is also known as a creel. That's a very good little tidbit that I had no idea. Never heard that word. All right, this is a piece of shimmer white cardstock, and I've taped it down to a piece just of cardstock, I mean, of cardboard, and I use washi tape. You can also use painter's tape, okay? You're gonna fill your aqua painter with water, and I like to give it the paper a bath before I start. Just run your water all over it. You want quite a bit of water on there, okay? Now I'm gonna pick up my ink here, and I'm just gonna start dropping it in places where all that water is. Now, we're not gonna be able to do this exactly how I did it because we need drying time. What I did is I added a bunch of ink like this and then I let it dry 
And then I did it again with more water and more ink. And then I did the brush out. But today we're just going to drop in that ink and add the brush out. And I have one that's done. But that way you'll know. If you, the more vivid you want your color, the more layers you're gonna do. And you wanna just really kind of let it dry naturally so that it kind of puddles and gives you those really good watercolor looks. Um, if it's sunny outside, you can go set it outside. It'll dry much quicker. If you use the heat tool, you kind of lose that natural water look, but it'll still work. All right, so let's say we've done that twice and I have done, it's still wet. I'm gonna take my brush -o, the blue, Prussian blue, I have poked holes in it, it's like a salt shaker, and I'm just gonna do a little bit, okay? And I did it kinda like that over on this side. And then, that's it, and I'm just gonna let it dry. I'm gonna leave it there, I'm gonna let it dry, okay? Um, it did take a good 15 minutes for it to dry. See how that, that uh, brush -o is kind of running and turning into swirls and doing a really cool look. It's like, it's very different from watercolor, I think. And I think the two combined really look good. And my purpose was for them to look like water. Now, we're not gonna have to wait because I have one that's finished. Let's see where it is. Here it is, look at that, isn't that cool? Love it. All right, so now, we're gonna start, let's see, before we put our card together, let's go ahead and do our fish. And the fish, we're easy, he is, we're gonna stamp him in early espresso. Mary, you're at the beach tide pool and watching you, nice. It does go perfectly, oh, that sounds like heaven. All right, I'm gonna stamp him in early espresso. And then, and I think you guys, I listed one of the colors is wrong on my supply list. I said we were using Old Olive, but we're not. We're using Light and Dark Mint Macaron. We are using Lovely Lipstick. Yeah, my colors are wrong on the project sheet. And Petal Pink. Wow, I was, you guys know, I sit at volleyball practice and fill this out on Thursdays and I was guessing, but no. I was wrong. So mint macaron, let's start with a light mint macaron. We're just gonna color him, top and bottom. Leave that middle part there for the pink that we're gonna put in there. I think the colors I listed would work fine too. All right, I'm gonna do some pink here. This is actually lovely lipstick like that, That's this is light, lovely lipstick, and then dark petal pink. And I'm gonna take that and just kind of blend that pink up and down, okay? Now let's get some dark, let's see, some dark mint macaron added in here. And I'm really just layering colors. You know, I don't really think if you, if you look up rainbow trout, there's quite a variation in colors for the rainbow trout. Quite a few variations. So don't be too difficult, I mean too you know hard on yourself about the colors being exactly right because they don't have to be, especially on a card. All right, now I'm gonna take this petal pink and do his fins also and I, <laughs> I am just going crazy here with this color. Out of the lines, looks like a kindergartner did it. But I think it works, right? I think it'll be okay. All right, now, the Best Catch stamp set has a coordinating set of framelits. And some of the framelits cut out some of the images, but some of them don't, which we will see in a little while. But this one does have the fish. So we're gonna cut it out. I'm expecting the UPS man, you guys, today, so you know what that means. Charlie's gonna lose his mind. He has a, he has a, oh, what do we call it? A severe hate for the UPS man. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, there's our fish. Now, I think we can start layering. 
I'm gonna put our water, our watercolor background right there. This is a balmy blue um, card base. And let's start with our fish, since he's our focal point. We'll put him right there. Then I took my stitched, let's see, where am I tiny? I might as well move my adhesive over here instead of keep, I keep having to reach for it. I use my stitched shape framelits. I use the largest square and then the second largest square to create a frame from copper. This is copper foil. We have several colors of foil. We have silver, gold, copper, and what's the other one? I'm drawing a blank. We have black foil, but I don't think that's in the annual catalog but I do think it carried over. Goodness, I can, I'm drawing a blank and I was looking at them last night. All right, four mini dimensionals and I'm gonna do the frame kind of at a angle. Now, I have used this, ban this banner pennant. It's called, they're called playful pennants, I believe, playful pennant framelits. And we're gonna just kind of do them at different angles, okay? Let's see, glue dots. Um, I, I kind of mentioned to you guys, we had, my daughter had a district tennis tournament this morning and she really wanted me to go. And I have to say, I don't understand tennis. I don't really fully get it, but she asked me to go and I, you know, okay, that's my mom duty. If she asks me, I gotta go. So I went to that this morning and <laughs> I need to learn how to play tennis, you guys. Um, so that I can understand what's happening because it's so frustrating sitting there for, you know, an hour and a half and having no idea what's happening. But anyway, I went to that this morning. So with that being said, there will not be any clean recordings. Usually I spend the morning before Facebook Friday recording a separate recording for each project. But this week, I did not get it done. I hope you guys will forgive me. It just, I just couldn't get it done. All right, we're gonna do this one kind of like that. This is, uh, the first one was early espresso. This one is crumb cake. Poor thing, this is her sophomore year. She's on varsity. She's, um, it, it's district and it's their last meet of the season and she and her partner lost. So they are done. But she said she was happy because they had actually played really well. So, that's good. I told her, well, the other, the team, the little doubles team she was playing, they just kind of were super grouchy. And Ellie and Phoebe were just smiling and they were happy and even though they were not winning. So I told her I was proud of her, right? I mean, you gotta keep a good attitude. Okay, so we've got three. The last one was Whisper White. Now let's, oh, I forgot to put the burlap. Okay, let's see if we can fit the burlap in here. I took a piece of burlap and put it right there. And one thing I did, I wanted to kind of roughen the burlap up. So I pulled off a few of these just to kind of give it that rough edge right there. And let's see if I can get this. Oh, I think I can. Hmm. All right, well, we're gonna try glue dots with the burlap. I'm not sure about that. I may have to come back later and restick it, but this was supposed to go under here and, well, all right, there we go. Now let me cut it off so it'll be even. Like that, there we go. Okay, 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 that worked, that worked. Let's stamp the sentiment, which looks like I didn't even get it out of the box. Best catch ever, I did. Hmm, maybe it's on my other tray. Yep, here it is. And I cut the words. You know, you guys, the thing about this set, I want you to remember, the sentiments don't necessarily have to be, if you wanna recreate the card, it does not have to be the same sentiments I used. I wasn't real crazy about the sentiments. They're very specific. But, you know, I'll use them for specific times, but this one, I mean, what if you just put happy birthday or happy retirement or, 
you're awesome. You know, something like that. Best catch ever. I don't know. When would you guys use best catch ever? Probably, I, I mean, my immediate thought is my husband, you know. But what else? What else could you use that for? So what I did is I cut the your the, I cut it off because that was too many words for what I wanted to do. See how I'm just cutting them apart and putting them like that? All right, last thing is we're gonna add a bow and you could take out the pieces from the burlap ribbon or you can use linen thread, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take two pieces like this. It's actually a long piece folded in half and I'm gonna tie in a bow as if I'm just using one piece. And that's a double bow, all right? Best catch in a baseball game, yeah, that would work, Carla. Yes, congratulations, yes, Irene, true. Yeah, uh, engagement card, that would be cute. Yeah, I knew you guys would have ideas. All right, there we go, there we go. Let's look at it compared, look how different this one, just the color went up that way. This one stayed where it was supposed to, but they both look pretty good. I don't know, what do you guys think? That's a fun background for this card, isn't it? And you could really use that background for different images in this set. Best friend, anniversary buddy, yes, very smart. Yep. All right, so, and because I put the wrong colors, let me tell you the colors again. Mint Macaron, light and dark. Light, lovely lipstick dark, what is it, I forgot, petal pink, petal pink, yes, petal pink, okay, those are the colors I used on our rainbow, <laughs> rainbow trout, I think that's what he's called, I don't know, my friend Kimberly, I don't know if she's on here, she's probably working today, she is in my downline, and she is a very serious fisherwoman. She fishes a lot with her husband, so she could probably tell me all the terms that I need to know. Okay, project number one done. Thank you so much, you guys. Very sweet of you. Let's look at project number two, and I think project number two is my favorite this time. It is a gift card holder, a masculine gift card holder. Let me just make some room here. I have, if you guys haven't joined me before, I have all my projects on a tray, everything I need on one tray. The problem is, is that I make a giant mess on my table and then I don't have room for my trays. Oh goodness. Okay, thank you guys, very sweet. Let's look at project number two. It is a Mossy Meadow and Old Olive gift card holder. It opens up like this and here's the gift card. Wing stop. Look, it was like a perfect match with a green and all the greens. I try to, when I go to Walmart, you know, they have the big gift card center. <laughs> and I try to pick up gift cards that will look good with our projects. So I think that one would be perfect for a guy. Okay, so let's see. Don't tell Walmart. I don't, I mean, they don't have any money on them. I'm just borrowing them until, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that bad? Is that wrong, you guys? I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not, or I'm in trouble. All right, let's see. What do I want to do? Let's make this little cluster first, okay? We're going to cut out. One of the things I was telling you is that the framelits don't all have images. This one right here, the little um, cattails, you know, um, Normally they would be green with brown tops, but I'm just gonna cut them out of crumb cake, okay? Let's stamp our little basket, the, the little fishing basket, or who, who told me what the word was? I forgot, I already forgot. See, I have, um, I have not, I do not have a very good memory. All right. I'm gonna cut out, while I'm cutting this one out, Oh, good grief, Erica, get it together. Are they under me? No. Where did they go, you guys? <laughs> you know, I see other people's Facebook lives and they lose their stuff constantly too. They're right here, oh my gosh. It's not just me. I haven't had my practice run today. 
All right, let's cut out one crumb cake cocktail and one fishing basket. And then we're gonna cut out another cattail. We're gonna put that there. And then I need to make sure that I don't use the wrong piece because I have all of these pieces. We're gonna cut out, nope, I need the silver foil. Here's the silver foil. And we're gonna use another framelit that doesn't have an image. It's just by itself. It's a little fly, I think. I was calling it a lure, my husband said it's a fly. Who knows? All right, so let's see if I can get that to pop out. Because I don't have, there we go, I don't have my tool with me. There's that. You guys know that trick? You throw it, well not throw it, but you know drop it. Usually it'll pop out. That's the lazy cheater method. All right, then there was one thing I needed to cut out. Oh yes, we're gonna cut out another one of these out of Mossy Meadow. Mossy Meadow is one of our new colors. Um, well, new, it came out in the annual catalog. And so it's been around almost a year now. And I, Mossy Meadow, yes. And you know what, I haven't used it at all. I have not used it. It's a very dark color, kind of a, well, a regal. You know, it's just very, I usually stick with the brights. All right, now I have cut out, look what's making an appearance, our favorite Stamparatus. I have cut out a stitched Whisper White Circle, and I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of adhesive, and I'm gonna put it right there. And we're gonna stamp it with Soft Suede, and this is the Crackle Paint background stamp. Oh good, I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one that loses things and they're usually right in front of me. What's the saying? If it was a snake, it would have bit me. All right, there we go. And I'll just peel that off. Now, I think we can kind of start to stack these. One thing we're gonna do to these cattails, and I don't have any grid paper, so let's turn over our PDF. I'm gonna add some soft suede ink with my Stampin' Sponge. Stampin' Sponges come in these big circles and you can just cut them apart. And I usually cut them into about six or eight little wedges. So see how I'm just kind of adding a little bit of, and you know what I think I actually did? Let's do the back side of one. The front side of one, the back side of the other. That way they don't look identical. And we can get those really dark like that, okay? There we go. Now, let's start stacking them up. We need some dimensionals. Did I make a mess? Nope, not too bad. We need to, let's see, we're gonna start with one kind of in the middle, of course with dimensionals. And then we'll put in the second one a little off and a little lower. Now, I'm gonna take my basket and I'm gonna put that right there. And then I'm gonna take that green one, and the only reason I cut it out in green is because I needed some grass. I'm gonna cut off those cattails because green cattails are a little weird. Don't think that really makes sense. And I'm just gonna kinda of cut it in half, okay? And let's cut a little bit of this off too. Now, I'm gonna slide it right here behind like that, and this one, let's see if I can get it to go all the way down. There we go, perfect. And our little fly, I think we'll just use a glue dot on that. Yes, for days, and then you find them. Carol, mm -hmm, we're in the same club, I know, I hear you. I usually will find something I've lost after I have bought the replacement. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's like how it goes, right? The other stamp set I'm using for the sentiment is Itty Bitty Birthdays. I wanted to make this just a birthday um, gift card holder. So I'm gonna use just Happy Birthday, stamp it on just a skinny piece of white, and cut it at an angle like that. And then one more dimensional. And we'll put it right down here at the bottom like that. Now I said I 
like to put bows on everything. So you guessed it, this is getting a bow. This is nature's poem, twine. The other one had a bow too, didn't it? Mm. Well, that's all right. I think it's still fine to put a bow on a guy's card, don't you guys? The Nature's Poem Twine has been one of my favorites. It's a pack of four different colors and they're kind of a thicker, almost, almost reminds me of a yarn, a, a stiff yarn. It's thick and it's braided. It's really nice. So I'm gonna use that. Hmm. Let's see. Well, that's gonna cover up the sentiment. Where did I put it last time? I put it a little bit further over, I guess. This one up a little bit further to the right. Like that, there we go. Okay, now we have our little cluster. Let's put our card together. Did I cut the DSP? I wonder if I forgot to cut the DSP for this. I think I did. That's why I like to do a practice. That's why I like to clean, to do those clean recordings because then I, I find what I forgot. This is a eight and a half by 11 piece of mossy meadow and I've cut it in half at four and a fourth. Then I have scored it at two and three fourths and at five and a half. Okay, so look, it's a regular card, but just the card front is scored in the middle to hold our gift card. So what you wanna do is take a circle punch and it doesn't have to be necessarily be this one. This is the one and three fourths and you're gonna punch that right there on that part that you're folding on the inside. That way you can get to that gift card. All right, so let's, why did I do that? Let's <laughs> double adhesive. All right, so see adhesive there, adhesive there, you fold it in and there you have it. Now I have a little piece of old olive. Doesn't old olive look fantastic with Mossy Meadow? Yeah, I think those colors go really well, really, really well. And we're gonna stamp the, the fisherman just down here. Just I just did that in Mossy Meadow. And we're gonna adhere this inside like that. Now, all right, we need a piece of DSP. So are you guys gonna be patient? Let me cut a piece of DSP because I cannot put this card together without that DSP. The DSP is from the neutral stack. And I have a ton of this because I used it for a class recently and we only used the navy. So now I've got a bunch of it. <laughs> All right, so that piece needs to be, and I think I even put that on the notes. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It needs to be two and five eighths by four and an eighth. So you could get two of these out of one piece. So two and five eighths and four and an eighth. Let's see. My tiny little cutter doesn't have all those eighths on it. So I was guessing. Yep, pretty good. Pretty good. And I like the stripes. Whenever I have to pick one of these patterns from these um, paper stacks, I always go to that one first. That's my favorite. Now this is a piece of old olive that I embossed with a pine planks, pine wood planks. Is that what it's called? The pine, why? Pine wood, pine, that doesn't sound right. Let me look at my list. Pine, yeah, pine wood embossing folder. Um, it's one of our thicker ones and it is one of my favorites. So old olive on, hmm, I didn't cut it very well and I embossed it sideways, kind of crooked but we'll pretend like no one sees that. And I put it on a piece of uh, early espresso and I'm gonna adhere it halfway over that. So it's opening like that, okay? All right, now before we put this down, we're gonna add a little bit more texture. I'm gonna get a piece of our copper trim and the copper trim is really interesting. You can just pull it apart. It kind of reminds me of pantyhose. I mean, it's not, but it, that's kind of what it reminds me of. When you pull it apart, it just kind of stretches and does this really funky thing. And so I, I also thought it looked like a net, which would be good when you're fishing, right? 
All right, so I've got this little piece, and if you pull it straight, it's gonna straighten back out. So we don't wanna do that. I'm gonna come over here. Let's see where I want it. I want it about right there. So I'm gonna just put down some adhesive and put that down. Isn't that funky? I love it, that texture, look at that. It's weird and I like it. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna put that right there again with our wonderful dimensionals. Yeah, Kathy, me too. Old Olive and Mossy Meadow. This is the first time I've really put these two together and I'm thinking, whoa. Um, Paula, that tiny little cutter is just old. I don't know, I think just a, the craft store, but I do like it um, just to have on my desk to trim little things. And it is, it's just, it doesn't have very good measurements on it. So I don't use it when I want it to be precise, but it is nice to have something little, just the craft store. All right, there we go. Did I get it all? I don't know. What did I forget? I feel like I forgot something. Nope, I did it. Yay. Now I have two gift card holders ready to go for those masculine birthdays coming up. I know you all probably have a grandson or a dad or somebody that is extremely hard to shop for. That would be my dad. I never know what to buy him. And he does like Bass Pro Shop. So a gift card to Bass Pro Shop and his birthday is in May. So now I'm ready. I am ready. Okay, so I hope you guys liked project number two. Let's clear it off and we'll do one more best catch project. I'm right on time, 345. I mean 245, I try to be done by three. So when my daughter comes busting in the door, I'm done. All right, so there we go. Let's look project number three. Now project number three doesn't use any of the stamps from Best Catch, but it does use those fish framelits. And here's that enjoy your retirement. I again struggled with the sentiment for this project. I'm not sure that's the right sentiment, but I really wanted to do something with, oops, sorry, did I just shake the camera? I really wanted to do something with this set and retirement because I feel like I know my dad, when he retired, we all said he was just gonna fish every day. So I really think that that would be good. Now, let me show you what's inside. This is my daughter's favorite snack from Target. It's their little brand of trail mix and it comes in lots of different flavors but Peanut Butter Monster is her favorite. So I've made things for these before. I love the size. Um, if this was for somebody's retirement, I would probably slide a gift card in here also. So you could cut out a piece of paper and have it pull out with a gift card. Um, also, I was thinking today, this would be a great party favor, either for a birthday or for a retirement party, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, let's do, let me think. We're gonna need to do some glue here first. So we're gonna do that first. I'm gonna show you guys a way to glue something that's hard to glue. We, I've talked a lot about the adhesive, the multi-purpose adhesive sheets. And the only problem with the multi-purpose adhesive sheets is that you have to remember to put it on your cardstock before you cut out your thing, whatever it is that you're gonna adhere, which is what happened to me this time. And then it, I forgot again. And if you could look real close, you can see my yucky adhesive that I tried to put in there. So I thought, no, we're gonna do this the right way. This net is from, and I have one right here, the Sea of Textures. Well, some of it is Sea of Textures. Um, one of my most favorite sets that came out in the annual catalog. So here's the net, which of course goes perfectly with our fish. Um, so I also have cut this balmy blue piece already and I've embossed it with a seaside, uh, is that right, seaside textures? Why can't I ever remember the name of the embossing folders? This one, it's on the list. Let's double check so I don't tell you the wrong thing. Seaside, yes, yeah, seaside embossing folder, okay? And it's like water, it looks like the waves of water. So I've already done that. I've cut out my net and I'm gonna take my silicone mat and just a sponge. Remember how we used the sponge a minute ago? This is another piece of that sponge. And I'm just gonna put some of this Tombow on 
my silicone mat and I'm going to dab some of that glue and I'm going to lightly go over the back side of this net. Now hold it down because if it gets up and starts moving, it's going to pick up that glue that's going through those holes, okay? So get it and then pick it up and set it down on, how did I put it? Like that, set it down on your piece, okay? Look, and now there will be no adhesive. I love that. I love it. Now I'm setting these between two stamp sets so it dries flat. The only problem is that I make a giant mess and I get it all over myself. I need to get better at my liquid adhesive applications, but I do like that technique. And so if you don't have the multi-purpose adhesive sheets, that's a really great way to add um, adhe adhesive on something like that. That would be really hard to do otherwise. Okay, let's make the box while that's drying. You're gonna need a piece of soft suede. Let's see, this is when I need my notes. Remember this PDF is over on my blog. The measurements are right here. You're gonna need a piece of soft suede cardstock that measures eight by six and a half. The long side, and this is all here from all the measurements I was doing for my event. Let's get those out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. On the long side, we're gonna do three fourths. We're gonna do three and three fourths, four and a half, and seven and a half. Turn it to the short side and do three fourths, five and a fourth, and six. Okay, now I'm running out of space to put my stuff. Now I have this piece over here because I wanna show you exactly how to cut it. This is how we're gonna cut it. Let's see, I need to turn it this way. Sometimes if I come back to watch the replay of somebody's video, I need to just pause it and look to see how they cut it, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do first is down here at the bottom, see we have two lines here and one line down here. We're going to cut out this square right here. Then we're going to snip, snip, and snip. Then we're gonna turn it, okay? And we're gonna cut out these four sections like this. And remember, this box will hold these Target's little um, trail mix. So go look at them, because you might find another way, another reason to use their trail mix, because they make a great little treat. They have Easter ones too, and Valentine ones. They're really good. Okay, so now here, we're gonna actually cut off this first one. We're gonna come over here, let's make it equal. We're gonna cut off that one. This one, oh, what did I do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I cut it wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I cut it wrong. It should be like this. See, all right, well that's all right. Look, we have an extra one. Basically what you needed to do over here, you're gonna cut this and this, but it needs to be on this side because this skinny tab right here is the one that you're going to adhere to the other side. And these little flaps right here that tuck in need to be cut in half, okay? Another thing you wanna do is cut them at an angle and they will go in much easier. So those of you that say I make things look easy, you can see not always. I'm gonna set it down so you can see it again since I screwed my first one up. All right, so here is the long side, right? And you scored it at three-fourths. And then what are the other measurements? Three and three-fourths, four and a half, and seven and a half. All right, so this tab is skinnier because we're gonna adhere it to the to the inside of that. This is your these parts that are equal are gonna be where you're gonna trim your lid. All right, my measurements are wrong, my cutting abilities were, my measurements were right, my cutting ability was wrong, but that's okay, good thing I had one ready, right? All right, put adhesive on your skinny tab, like that, and fold it over. See how it goes behind? And then you're gonna fold in the bottom, and I always like to adhere the front, tab last. That way you have a rounded 
edge. All right, so see how this is the front of the box. I'm gonna do that tab last. There we go. All right, now you're gonna tuck these in and they're all gonna go in the box like that. Let's get a, let's get a little peanut butter monster and put them inside. There we go. All right, now let's go back to our net and our water and we're gonna adhere that right to the front. All right, there we go. Now let's cut out the fish. This is what we're using. What I was going to say is that this project doesn't use the stamps from Big Catch, but it does use the framelits. Um, and the framelits, when you buy the stamp set and the framelits together as a bundle, you are saving 10%. So just remember that. Okay, it's better to buy the bundle than to buy them separately. And the if you're ordering online, the website will not notify you. It will not say, hey, wait a minute. If you add this in as a bundle, you'll save 10%. Um, so you have to go and make sure you look in the catalog for the bundle number. Um, and enter it together. All right, so these are the two little fish framelits. Somebody on Tuesday said, I didn't even realize those were in there. They are. All right, so we're gonna do one small mossy meadow fish, one large and one small old olive fish. Sticking with our good color combo. And then we're gonna make the little bobber. That's the kind of fisherman I am. I like to use a bobber. My husband always rolls his eyes and he says, we don't need a bobber. And I say, I like to have a bobber for that fish so I can see what's happening. Otherwise it's really boring, right you guys? I don't know, maybe it's just me. All right, one and a fourth inch circle is what I used. So we're gonna do a full red circle and then we're gonna do a half, which piece, I guess we'll use the smaller one. Um, we're just gonna do a half of a white circle. Nothing terribly fancy for this. Okay, put that like that. Do you guys, how many of you use a red and white bobber? I know it's probably more for kids maybe, I don't know, but I like it. And he even has other bobbers that I don't like. They're long and skinny and I don't like those. I want the old fashioned kind that I used when I was little. <laughs> now this is just a little scrap. Did you see I just cut out a little rectangle and we're gonna do it, put it right there, okay? Now let's get something that looks like fishing line and kind of behaves the same way, our silver thread. I'm gonna wrap it around five of, four of my fingers about five or six times. And I'm gonna pinch it in the middle. See how it's just, it's temperamental. And I'm gonna put some adhesive on the back of my bobber and put it like that. And then I'm just gonna kind of spread it out and make it kind of messy. So it looks like I've been fishing. <laughs> I've made a big mess of the fishing line. Oh, I always feel so bad for my husband. He, he wants us to go fishing with him so badly. We go and he spends the entire time untangling all of our lines. Yeah, I know, it's a dad thing, I guess. I remember my dad getting so frustrated. <laughs> oh. All right, now let's put these fish on with mini dimensionals. I'm gonna have one coming back behind there. And let's have another one coming back from the back. No, let's see, that one needs to go that way, like that. And last but not least, the mossy meadow fish. Hmm, what do you guys think? I keep debating about these fins, whether that, that one goes up or goes down. I'm sure one of you knows, but I can't tell. Both ways looks right. Hmm, I think maybe up. Yeah, I can't tell. Let's see, we'll have this guy following his friend. 
All right, there we go. Last thing is the sentiment. And this sentiment is from Itty Bitty Greetings, which is an excellent set. It is gonna have a sentiment for every single thing that you do. Whatever it is, it's gonna have a sentiment. And some that you may never need. But it's a good one. It's actually a two. It's got two sets. See how many are on there? I highly recommend that set. All right, now put it in your, let's see, I'm gonna do it over, in your classic label punch. And I'm gonna snip it off like this. Oops, that wasn't straight. I'm gonna snip it off like that, put a little bit of adhesive, and put it right there. And there we have it. All right. There we go, three best catch projects. Let's look at them. Four, if you count Tuesday's fancy basket. I cannot remember the name. I'm gonna have to write it down now. Um, now, let's see, I'm gonna go back and see if you guys had any questions because I was not watching because I was getting too distracted. Two fins are always on the bottom, Diana says. So did I do, so that guy's right, that, yeah, okay, okay, there, I did it right. What about, I guess that was the only place I did it. Diana, I did it right. Two fins on the bottom, thank you for telling me that. All right, yeah, cute fishing line. I know, that silver, just it, it just totally reminded me of fishing <laughs> with my dad and with my girls. Oh, Sharon, you like to use bobbers too. Linda, your husband fishes while you read. Yeah, that's kind of how it is for us too. Oh, my daughter's home. That's interesting. She's home very early. All right, well, you guys, Swedish fish. Mary says Swedish fish would be great too. Yes, very good. That would be a cute, cute, cute project. All right, you guys, make sure that you hop over and you get the PDF which looks like this, and you get your order in by Monday, and I will send you these three projects for you to do at home, and it will look like this, okay? All right, let me know if you have any questions. I will be checking email in and out a little bit this weekend. Um, we've got lots of games tomorrow, um, but let me know if you have questions, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you next week. You guys have a great weekend. Actually, I won't see you next week, will I? I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.